When I say chillax, people chillax watch this. This week, the fiends watched. Nobody. The brand spanking new film with Bob Odenkirk that just Pre came out? Pretty new. It's on iTunes. You can rent That's it true. for twenty dollars. Is it there to buy yet? You can rent it for twenty dollars. So you can't buy it. Got it. Yeah. Uh, we watched it, and uh, we're going to fucking review it. We are, and we have no idea what the fuck either of us thought about it because we don't watch these things together because we hate each other, but we secretly love each other at the same time. So what we do is we just ask each other quickly what we thought since we have no idea. I'm going to ask you first, man. Please ask me. Short little spoiler-free synopsis. What did you think of Nobody? This is what I thought of Nobody. <laughs> I really liked this movie. Now... It's no Johnny Dub, dude, all right? I'm gonna fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> it's no John Wick, but I didn't expect it to be because, you know, everyone's comparing it to it, but I thought Bob Odenkirk was fantastic. Overall, I really, really did like this movie. I'm still, tr I watched it twice. I'm still trying to figure out if I love it or not. I feel like it's missing a little something for me to actually put it on, it's a couple steps below Johnny Wick for me right now, but overall, I really like this movie. Mikey, what did you think about Nobody? Um, no body. <laughs> um, I tell you right now, um, I really, really, really like this movie. Hmm. I probably love this movie. Hmm. It, wow, wow, loved it. Totally different movie than John Wick. I don't know why people would compare it just because it's the same writer, you know what I mean? Like it's just totally a different tone. It's it's way different. Mm. Um, so I don't like the comparisons to John Wick, but people suck John Wick's dick. So this movie felt original and fresh, and I really liked the movie. So I'd like to say we're on page ninety eight. We're on page ninety, dude. We are on page ninety eight together. Okay, so we're on the but same. But you're page. reading a word. I'm like three words ahead of you. I think. Oh, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think yeah, I'm just yeah. like three words ahead of you, maybe. I'll get to that paragraph. Yeah, it, well, yeah, exactly. I'll get to that paragraph. No, we're on the same paragraph. Oh, I, I'm just a couple words ahead of you. Is what I'm trying Got to say. Got you. Yeah, okay, that's it. That's it. Look, I like think, if we were yeah. reading John Wick, you'd be like oh. two paragraphs ahead of me, probably. You know, but same book. You know, what I mean? same page. Same, same book. page. Same book. Okay. Same author. Okay. So, yeah, I from the Opening shot. I loved this fucking movie. Black. Yes. Just black around him. Yep. And I'm like, this is awesome it's the slow motion and they're playing misunderstood love that song and i've loved that song ever since it was on a common mm. album maybe 10 15 years ago trying to get to their dream yeah so that's playing I'm going, all right i'm in i'm fucking in yeah. and uh yeah so from the opening shot i just i felt it was fantastic yeah i like those like those quick what are they called not quick cuts hard cuts well so whatever. okay yeah. so right when this right when it started yeah. okay in the first, after that first shot, right, there is about 30 seconds to a minute where the editing was flawless, mm. okay? Flawless. They show you this dude's life in 20 seconds. Yeah. They show you his life in 20 seconds. It's fantastic, but it's all done through editing. Right. All done through editing. It reminds me a lot. I know Edgar Wright didn't originate that, but he's the one to do it a lot lately. Yeah. Where it's that just cut. It's We saw, like you just said, this guy's life, but we see a week pass by in 30 seconds. And it's just Absolutely. the same thing. The, the the Him just going through that same routine and just going, oh my God, he's missing the garbage. Uh, he's, he's sleeping divided up amongst his wife. Yep. Like shitty job, taking the bus. Like you just feel so bad for him. And we're a minute 
into after that opening shot. So I love the editing on that. Yeah, that and that's all done through the editing. You, you're seeing a seven days, right? Over seven days. In 20 seconds, you know everything you need to know about this guy's life. And from that moment on, I said, yes. I don't fuck all this bullshit with wake hitting the alarm clock. They always say, like, never start your movie with a character waking up and, like, hitting their alarm clock. It's one mm. of the most cliche things ever. Um, so this is just a creative way just to show someone's daily life in 20 seconds. Fantastic. Right. I felt like they set up his life beautifully. Like, mm. they set up who this guy was beautifully. Past that first montage, I'm talking about the first, you know, 10 minutes or so. Yeah. They set up that he's this, you know, kind of normal guy, timid, a little cowardly, but you know something else is there. Obviously, you saw the trailer, right? And you know that there's something behind. There's something in his past where he's a badass, right? Right. And then the break-in happens. So they took maybe 20 bucks and an old watch? Mr. Madsen, did you even take a swing? No. Could have taken her, Dad. He acts like totally the cool, calm, collected guy who's like, take whatever you want, get the fuck out, right? Mm -hmm. And then they show him with the neighbor, and the neighbor's like, oh, if I was there, I would have beat him up. The cop's like, if I was there, I would have, you know, I would have done something. So all that was done so well to make you go, in such a short amount of time, to make you go, oh, okay, he's living this life that does not match up with his past. It's so effective because he you don't expect to see this. That's what was so uh, shocking about the initial trailer was, oh, my God, Bob Odenkirk's doing this. First of all, he's 56, 58 years old, whatever. And he looks fantastic uh, doing it because you can tell he put a lot of effort into training and whatnot. But it's so effective because you would never guess that he would do this role. No. And that's what like that's what I really respect about this movie is that they didn't pick Jason Statham. No, it's Bob fucking Odenkirk, and that's to, to do this role at fifty eight. That's what fantastic. I meant by it's totally different than John Wick. That so, yes, yes. John Wick, you're like, oh, Keanu Reeves. Okay, he done the Matrix. He can pull this off. He's a you know quote unquote action star, right? right. It really was one of the hardest, if not the hardest, physical stories I've had to tell, because there's a lot more action in Parabellum than there is in the other two films. <laughs> This is a totally different tone. This is a dark comedic tone throughout the entire movie. And we'll get into examples and we'll play a lot of examples uh, throughout this mm. episode of why I think this movie is really great just by filmmaking, not the story. The story is nothing. The story is doesn't mean shit. This movie to me was great because of the filmmaking choices, because of the editing, because of the casting, because of the way we're shown everything. That's why this movie's great. It's not the story. The stories we've seen a thousand times before. A million times. It's the tone of it and the way the filmmakers did it. Give me the goddamn kitty cat bracelet! It's nothing new, right? It's the average guy who's hiding something and ends up doing something really awesome. Like we've seen that a thousand times. But I'm not ever I'm not ever bored by that as long as it's done right. Because Never. there will be fifty movies this year that are gonna do this. Yeah. Um, where someone, you know, they have a secret past and, oh, they're really a badass or maybe they have a superpower, whatever. I don't know about 50. Five. I agree. <laughs> Who the fuck are you? Me? I'm nobody. We knew what we were getting into, right? You knew from the trailer, you knew that he was hiding this and that he was going to be badass, but I'm ready for it if you're showing it the right way. So to your point, yeah. I'm super interested, even myself, yeah. to see what you've dug up. So, yeah, let's start off with the first great scene in the movie. Okay. The bus scene. I kill Crip for breakfast. Did you ever put your motherfucking hands up on no school bus, nigga? Oh, uh, I mean, I think it's the best scene. That's my opinion. 100%. Yeah. It is awesome. Because everything before that was like, eh, they break in, and then he goes back, try to get the brace. It really didn't have anything to do with the story. Right. It just made him mad. Right. That's what that is doing it's making him mad so that when he's on the bus and these random events happen he is going to lash out make sure these doors open or whatever he says right when he's yeah playing. exactly yeah, he, wanted he wanted to, to but he had no connection to them nope bunch of russian guys get out yeah. and we get that amazing amazing scene yeah. 
Uh, guys, I put glasses on because I have a little eye issue, so I'm not an asshole. I mean, maybe some people might think I am. It's in the description. Don't worry about it. Absolutely. <laughs> but so what I thought was so great about the bus scene was that he was getting his ass kicked. Yeah. I was like, he's getting fucked up. Yeah. Like, he's not a John Wick. He's not going no. in there and just beating the shit out of these dudes and walking out perfectly fine. He gets his fucking ass kicked. He gets thrown through the bus fucking window and comes back in. And gets a fucking five-inch blade in his side. I'm like, he, oh, my God. That <laughs> is what was so awesome. Yeah. Is that that's kind of really how it would happen. 100%. One guy taking on five dudes, you're going to get... You're licks in, but you're also going to get licked on, you know? Oh, he might have got licked on worse than some of the people that he licked. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Like the black maybe. guy in the bus, like he got it bad. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But our, our main character got it pretty bad, Mikey. He did. And yeah. then he, he goes home and you learn that the wife knows about his past yeah. a little bit because, you know, she she heals his wounds. So we're like, okay, so they're slowly revealing things about the story, mm -hmm. but it's not really important. It's not the main thing. To me, right. I think the main thing of this was the filmmaking. There's not a lot of like depth to it there's not a lot of character changes through it even right. though he does kind of you know wanna he realizes he can't live this normal life that's about the biggest arc you get yeah other than that it's pure entertainment for sure that's that's kind of what i think they were going for yeah yeah i mean as far as depth uh i know we said we're getting into spoilers so that's fine johnny so about depth yeah like the the villain okay like, so depth sorry to, depth. i don't i don't want to interrupt you dude please you know interrupt because your fingers up and you're wearing glasses but this do is it. another footage thing dude okay oh. the russian club scene in the introduction to the villain okay you get a literal martin scorsese wonder guy comes up gets out of the car goes into a fucking restaurant slash bar i'm going oh this is great this is a uh, homage to one of the best wonders in cinematic history. Get your cash out, because we're paying Uncle homage. They paid a homage. We're oh, yeah. just collecting yeah. the remnants of that. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. we didn't pay shit. That's but how awesome was that? Awesome, like, awesome. If you don't realize that, that's fine. Like, maybe you're not supposed to. It's supposed to just be like, oh, okay, it's a guy walking into a club. But that's hard to do. Like, yeah. that's hard to pull off, man, you no, know? And that's the only thing going through film buffs' minds. Come on, dude. Or buff films' minds. It's it's the same. It's the same thing. Yeah. So yeah. it's just, it's that it's fucking hard to pull off with all those people and the traffic. And he, yeah. I watched it three times. I'm like, oh, the cars have to stop. He he walked up the, the fucking horn beeps and he goes inside the club and then bang gets the coke and then does the coke and then gets on stage and starts singing. I'm going, this is all greatly choreographed and mm -hmm. greatly executed. Yeah. yeah and you, need a, you need a, a team that's able to do so and execute. And they do. Yes, they absolutely do, but man. That dancing, and then, dude. Well, yeah. But see, wait, okay, so what do no, you say I liked about that? It. No, no, I liked it. I'm just oh. saying, he's a bad dancer. This I is love funny. it. Yeah, no, I like it. it's like a quirky, yeah. weird thing where I'm like, oh, yeah. yes, yeah, this Russian gangster who blows a line of coke and gets on stage and starts fucking doing hips, stupid dude. dancing. I go, that's what I like. I like yeah. that quirky weirdness in movies. Like, they yeah. didn't have to do that. They could have showed this guy as this badass, half shadow lit, just sitting in the club, having mm. people come up to him. And that's it. And that's how we learned about him. Right. No, they, they're they like, no, he's going to come in, do some fucking coke, get on stage, start dancing and having a great time. Yeah. Then you get, I thought it was just such a fantastic scene. When you learn that he actually is a badass oh. and he is a villain. Yeah. Oh my God. So it's the black Russian scene. <laughs> I loved this scene, dude. I, again, you throw a black Russian in there. Quirky. They didn't have to do that. No. That's awesome. Like, I'm going, that's fantastic that you're just like, now nah, we're going to have this backstory where, where his dad was an Ethiopian Olympic, um, Olympian who banged his mom and then left him. And that's why I love it. It adds detail and depth to the characters where you're mm -hmm. like, there's a world in there. There's some, they have a past somehow. And... I love, like, I, I don't know, those little details fucking really, really, really elevated the movie for me on that. And that's, the Black Russian is a perfect example of that. And you know, to your point, that would never happen in John Wick. Never happen. Yeah. John totally Wick different is tone. way serious. Yeah. It's, there's a couple little things, but sure. it's just, yeah, that's why I didn't, I didn't compare this to John Wick at all. You know, I just thought it was a different beast. I unfortunately did. I know, and a lot of people do, and that's fine. I get it, because they're marketing it yeah. to the John Wick crowd. Yeah. They're like from the, the, the makers of John Wick. Yeah. 
dude, the music. We'll talk about the music later. Mm. Oh my God. I'm like, this, this is the opposite of John Wick music. Totally. To me, this movie was so different than John Wick. Um, it's totally different that there yeah. are some similarities though that you just can't ignore. Well, yeah. Oh, There's yeah. just some you A guy who has a past. And, oh, come you know, on. Yeah. Gold in gold. the basement. Mike, gold in the basement, Mikey? Yeah, yeah. But besides that, it's the same writer. This was. This yeah. might have been, you know, like a different version of John Wick. And then he 100%. just tweaked it. Yeah, I don't know. Now, you know, if they would combine forces in the future, would you like that? If there was a John Wick nobody combination? No, because again... They're totally different movies. I, think I don't think those movies blend at all. I think they could. I think it actually could. Okay. Well, yeah, that's we'll just talk me. about anyway, that later, we man. Will, or we won't. And that's just the last thing we're going to say about that. Yeah, I just think they're totally different movies. I think yeah. this is comedic and dark. Uh, it's dark comedy, and it's totally different. Like, definitely wouldn't go with the John. Like, who's what tone are you going to take? You're going to take the John Wick tone, or are you going to take the nobody tone? You know? You can maybe... Those tones won't work together is what yeah, I'm trying to say. Yeah, it would be tough. It would be very tough. I'm yeah, just, dude. I'm, I'm a no... hopeless Bob Odenkirk mantic. You know what I'm saying, dude? Yeah, me too. But what does it have it. to do with fucking... I think it would be pretty cool to combining see Combining John up, Wick. Pop them in, dude. Why not? Because the John Why Wick... Why not? Because they won't mesh, because dude. Because the John Wick series is fucking done. And I think it would yeah. need a fresh take. Even if it's a John Wick movie where Bob Odenkirk shows up for a fucking 20 minutes. I would like a movie called Another Nobody... And you just have Bob Odenkirk again, and then maybe John Wick makes a cameo. Okay. I want to see more Bob Odenkirk than John Wick. Oh, again, I'd rather see. I'm in the minority, so I'd yeah. rather see more Bobby Ode. Okay, all right, 100%. cool. Okay, just want to point that out there. I don't want you to think I'm always sucking off cameo. No, 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 man. Nope. nope I had nope. for a long time. My jaw sore. I have an example of why I love. It's a perfect example that I took from the movie of why I think this movie's awesome and why it was so well done to me. It's the scene where the Pentagon worker goes to the basement, right, to get the file on Hutch to give to the uh, Russian. So it's a guy going down to the basement and pulling out papers, right, and then emailing them, okay? Hmm. They could have literally just cut to him walking through a door and opening a box, and that's it, done. But no, 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 that's not what they do. They literally, through editing, just through editing, they show you this guy walking, getting on the elevator, sliding off the box, putting the box down, opening the box. That is filmmaking and that is editing. Like a lazy pe filmmaker is just like, yeah, who cares? We won't even show it. Just have him come down, looks at the paper, done. No, they put love and care into it through filmmaking and they made it awesome for us to watch. A guy walking to a fucking basement and it's yeah. all done through editing. It's these quick edits, boom here, boom there. So good. And that little thing of it's not an action scene. Mm. It's not someone dying. Mm. It's a guy walking to a basement. And for some somehow they made it awesome. And to me, I think it's because of the editing. To me, editing is the is the reason why I love this movie. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, aren't they showing all that while someone else is talking in a different scene? Uh, I don't know. No, no, oh, I don't okay. think so. Oh, okay. no. It's right after the uh, Bob Moeder goes and sees the barber. That's 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 what it's right that's after. That's what yep. it was. Yep. Yeah, my fault. But the editing, you're right, though. I mean, again, I know you have these awesome examples, but after even the second watch, like you, I feel like I try to, obviously I noticed the editing, but I really noticed it on a rewatch. Okay. Um, and it, it pops off the screen. And so I like the, well, what's, what I really like about what you're saying though, is yeah. that like, yeah, like, yeah, the movie's fine, but it's the edit. I've never seen you so jazzed over editing. Cause I don't point. remember the last movie I watched mm. where I said, oh my God, the editing is flawless in this movie. I don't remember the last movie I watched mm. where I go, this movie's good, because of how well edited it is. It's crazy. Because everyone says like, hey, a good editor, you're not supposed to notice it, right? Because it's supposed to be fluid. Like it's supposed right. to be two people talking. You're not supposed to notice these cuts, right? But this is more stylized editing to pick up the pace and show the story and connect all these characters. And that's the vibe they went for. And they did it. It wasn't this invisible editing. It was, no, this is good editing right in front of your face. And to show a guy walk into a basement, but make it awesome and make it creative, it, that's hard to do. And they did it, it fantastic. And that has to be so thought out and right. so well meticulously planned and they do it and it's fucking great. Or you go yeah. the lazy route and it's boring and we've seen it a million times. Absolutely, so that's the complete opposite. 100% why okay. I think this movie is great because they weren't lazy. Mm. So aside from the Odenkirk, I loved every character in this movie. The boss who we've seen a thousand times who he's buying from I took a picture of that guy and I go, He's still alive. Like I, we've been watching that dude in movies since we were five years old. He's like, been in everything. He randomly just pops up in things, and yeah. I'm like, oh my god, he's still 
fucking alive, dude. It, it, it's, it's, it blew my mind. Blew my fucking mind that he's still alive and working. Same. Fantastic. And the dickhead yep. uh, brother-in-law. Great. Charlie. You know. Yep. Great. Charlie. Yeah, there you go. I, I just wanted to point out, I loved all the characters. A part I loved was when he was telling the, uh, they get in a car accident and then he's telling the uh, black Russian his story. I couldn't arrest anyone. So I used to make sure that there was no one left to arrest. It's the only time that we get any sort of past from Bob Odenkirk. Mm. So great. And they show him talking and he's revealing his past while the black Russian is dying. And he's kind of getting into it and he's getting emotional. And then he looks down and the black Russian's dead. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Like that's funny. That's comedic. Right. So that's never going to happen in a John Wick movie. No, good so point. that's why, I mean, I just, it felt so different than, uh, than John Wick to me. That's a perfect I, example of I why. Agree. You know I what I mean? Agree. It's different, yeah. but there, there's still those like similarities that'll glue you to the idea of John Wick. But I'm with you though. They are completely no, yeah, different. Movies. I, I, I'm not trying to get an argument. I was just saying that though. I'm just pointing out examples of why I think it's different. Is what I'm saying. It's totally different. But yeah, it's like you felt bad. It's like oh, he just he's trying to tell a story, man. Well, and see, of course... I didn't. Sorry to interrupt, but I didn't know if the director was trying to say. Guys, his past doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't mm. matter what he did. That's not important. You know he's a badass. You know he's killed yeah. a bunch of people. It doesn't matter. You want to learn, but it's only going to ruin the mystery. You want to learn about his past and blah, blah, blah. Nope. Dead. Like, nope. So I don't know if that was a little symbolic of, like, the director being like, no, we're not going into his past. Yeah. It's not that important. You know he was a badass. We give you enough details, and that's it. I, I, maybe. We'd have to ask him. Call him on the phone. I don't know. We could. Have you ever met a black Russian? Uh, the old folk scene that you just mentioned with yeah. Christopher Lloyd. That scene is so crafted so well, dude. It's crafted like a fucking horror movie scene. What a wonderful That scene was fucking great. And the callback to Christopher Lloyd always watching TV too loud. Because you're like, oh my God. This fucking orderly or whatever you want to call him is going to yep. run in and be like, there's just going to be dead bodies everywhere. Nope. They're hidden perfectly. He's still and choking look, out he's one. He's choking him and then he does the old, hits him on the face right as he dies. I loved it. Fantastic. Loved so, yeah, it, dude. I really yep. enjoyed, like, obviously aside from the action scenes, there's all those little scenes that, that are memorable. Yeah. And that is probably my second favorite scene behind the bus scene. I loved that Christopher Lloyd killing those guys and just the whole build up to it and then the guy coming in and having a little trickery. I thought yeah. it was amazing. So let's talk about the music, man. Um, yeah. I felt like this, the music choices were crazy, like bizarre to me. I'm yeah. just like, what? They're playing these old Frank Sinatra type songs mm. and, and like insane music choices, man. It's not uh, adrenaline driven, intense club music. The opposite. Up. The opposite. Complete opposite. And, so, it, and it, when, it, when it's an opposite, it's effective. This is a good example of how music changed the vibe of the movie. Perfect example. I know I got a lot of examples tonight, guys. Hit me with some more But examples. I went hard with it, okay? They're playing, I don't know if the song's called Heartbreaker. Mm, oh, yeah, yeah. During, uh, during the fucking ending car chase with fucking machine guns. Yeah. And they're playing Heartbreaker. Like, yeah. that's amazing. Mm -hmm. That is fucking amazing. You don't see that. You're watching a Fast and Furious or you're watching a John Wick or you're watching anything else. It's going to be some just generic kind of score. Yeah. Like, that's it. No, they're playing Heartbreaker. And yeah. that is the charm of this movie that I love. Your enthusiasm is coming off the fucking page about this movie so much that I think my score went up a tenth of a point, and we're going to get to it later, but I'm, I'm just saying. I'm not trying to do that, but I'm glad it happened. You're not trying to, but nope. it's happening. I, I, and I'm glad, and I feel it happening. I, I you know can what I'm feel, I can feel it happening in many ways. I, dude, I was so in love with this movie. Like, I don't know, man. I'm not going to compare it to other movies, John Wick. I'm not going to, like, say <laughs> if it's better or not, because it's different, but... It, it, there was I didn't have a big problem with it, right? No, the only no, no, problem no. that I did have mm -hmm. was the sequence of events that led to the main story going on just were a little far-fetched, okay? Because yeah. there's no connection, no, right? Nope. 
People break into his house, thinks they steal his daughter's bracelet, goes back and gets the bracelet, doesn't Randomly, find it, he's mad. A bunch of Russian gangsters crash and he car, fights and, and beats the shit out of him. And the then that Russian so gangster's mad, brother the is the bracelet, so so watcher and leader of the Hope Shack, which is all the Russian mad. mafia's money. And we have our movie. So yeah. the sequence of events to me were weak and they were lacking. Yeah. But I kind of put that aside because I'm like, the story in this doesn't matter to me. Right. They're making this with care. They are, it's very slick and very clean and very well done. So I was like, yeah, all right, the I, I, I'll let that slide. I wish it was mm. a little more connected and personal, but I'll let that slide. Yeah, because like I, even after the first viewing, I'm like, well, how come they didn't just have like the the, the brother of the Russian, the one that he puts in the, uh, in the hospital bed, why don't you just have him break into the house? Okay, yeah, Just yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. more of a connection. And again, it's yeah. like, I hate to say it, but I'm gonna say it, John Wick. You killed John Wick's dog. So John Wick is about revenge. This movie's not about revenge, right? Right. They're coming after him. So he needs to defend himself, right? Right. So it's a different, it's just, it's different motivations, mm. but the randomness of the events, that's all just tied up, is the randomness of the events to me were a little far-fetched, but again, it's a movie, story wasn't that important, and I'll let it slide. Yeah, it didn't point. really bother me much. I just, yeah. again, I feel like we, we tend to be like, well, how could you make it just a little bit better? Or how could you do something? But yeah, I mean, again, this was fine. The route that they took was fine. Yeah, no movie's perfect. No. And I always try to pick things out of movies that I don't that I don't like. And that's the only one that I found that I was like, eh, don't like it. So yeah, uh, yeah you want to get to the finale, dude? Let's talk about the finale, dude. I loved the finale. It was awesome. I fucking loved the finale, okay? There's a shot that where there's a camera attached to the handgun oh. and it's still everything else is moving and then Riz's hand just comes and grabs it. I've never seen that before. Never. Right? I was like, how'd they do that? That's cool. Yeah, well, you know how they did it. I mean, it, I know dude. how they, they did it. They set a camera but... on the thing, but I've never seen it, yeah, right? No, no, I, no, 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 no. I was like, I gotta ask Mikey if he's ever seen that in another action movie. Never once. I never I never seen that. I go, cool, creative shot, awesome. And if I have, it went in something really bullshit and just went in the file in my brain that's just, oh, put it away. But I doubt I've seen it. Okay. And uh, Christopher Lloyd going nuts. Going hard. Blasting fools. So good. And it's so cool to see a guy that you grew up with, that you love from all these other characters and just just badass at 90. Yeah. Like, that's awesome. Almost 90. Don't fucking be oh, ageist, dude. Uh, don't be whatever, ageist, dude. you know what I mean? Yeah, whatever. But I'm scared but of no, Christopher Lloyd. Dude. It was awesome. It was yeah. like, we don't know what he does. Yeah. We don't know, but we know that he's had a pass because he's like, right. I missed this shit. Right. So you're like, oh. He has a past. Oh, he has a fucking past. And so does Rizzo. Comes out of the woodworks to protect his white brother. Which well, no you know, Rizzo, about. wasn't he uh, uh, with, uh, what's his name? With Bob Odenkirk? Weren't they like, um, uh, didn't they work together? He said he was his brother. Well, no, they said brother. Like, um, But no, brother. I think, it, I thought it was implied that they were like adopted brothers or stepbrothers or something like no, that. No, wait, when? Yeah, well, I don't, I just, just got Just because they said the word brother? Yeah. There's a scene in the office where they're talking about how would they have one bullet, you have to kill Hitler. Uh, and two other like evil people. I can't remember who it is. Mm. Ready? One bullet. And boom! <laughs> Bob Odenkirk was in the office. This movie's weirdly tied to the office <laughs> because then in the finale, we get Riza doing a triple headshot. It's fucking awesome. I've never seen that either. No. You seen a double? Triple headshot? Seen a dub? Dude, it goes. I go. Yeah. What? That's yeah. fucking great, man. Yeah. Now the hand to hand, you can see that like this is top notch. This is the choreography is insane with the hand to hand combat. And if there's anything that I know, I love, and I'm sure you do. You skip past a, a triple <laughs> fucking headshot to talk about fucking guys going like this hand to hand. No, but it's hand to hand with Mikey. It's a triple headshot. That's so hot. It's triple headshot, which is fantastic. But I'm talking about hand to hand gun combat. <laughs> You're gonna blow guys, a fucking. There's fucking three guys, and one, <laughs> and one bullet goes through all of them. I've never seen that, and Mikey brushed past it like he's fucking Picasso. What I want to say is I like a good prepare montage, <laughs> bro. A fucking fort, or if you're in a fucking house and you gotta, it's our time to fucking Silver lock bullets, it down. Silver bullets, Monster Squad, yeah. Home Alone. Anybody yeah. prepare. Aaron, dude. And all the things he set up were awesome, dude. The, the the click on the stairs to fucking explode everyone. You're just waiting awesome. for someone to click on it. Yeah. All the booby traps and shit. Yeah, you gotta send me that footage now because I got <laughs> Awesome, awesome, awesome setup, dude, of them coming back. Bob Odenkirk wants that painting. Yeah. And he's just walking in, Uzi and everyone. Well, he yeah, he, I think he just takes the painting because he knows it's worth money, right? Uh, probably, yeah. Well, why, why did he take the painting? Yeah, maybe he just liked it. Again, man, I, I, I love the way it finished. They promised something. 
and they delivered on it. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, Chekhov's gun, right? You know that rule? So it's a that? basic rule just in movies and filmmaking where if you're going to show a gun in the first act, you have to have it used in the second act, right? Mm. And I think the director's like, oh, yeah, that's a famous rule. I'm going to do that exact thing literally. Yeah. Charlie gives him a gun. He puts it in the freezer in the first 20 minutes. And then what do you get? You get Bob Odenkirk who doesn't have a gun. He opens the fucking freezer, grabs it, shoots him through the fucking box. Perfect example of Chekhov's gun. It Got to be honest. I've never heard that term. And that is awesome. Wow. Can't say I have. I thought he said jack offs. Bravo. Like, that's why I love this movie because there was care into it. There was thought into it. There was planning into it. And everybody seemed like they cared about what they were doing and they just wanted to make a cool little movie. Like, that's it. It's not big budgeted and yeah. the car explosions and all this shit everywhere. Mm. Like, it's not that big scale wise, you know? Yeah. 90 minutes. It went by like that. And to me, that I think that was the best choice was to keep yeah. it quick because yeah. you don't need it's not a complex story let's just get to the point and show all this shit happen mm -hmm. and have good enough decent enough acting to where you like the characters and you right. care about the characters just enough because there's no you know emotional depth and changes throughout the movie really so right. the actors really need to pull this uh pull this off you know one conversation with his daughter you're like yep love it Right, like yeah, they're it's quick, just, they're small, yeah, it, and yeah, because you don't have a lot of time, so yeah. boom, and they do it just enough to where you go, yep, like it. So, I honestly, didn't have a lot of problems with it. I, I really liked everything about it, and I don't know if I could have liked it any better from what I was expecting because I was expecting mm. something good, and it, it delivered something good. So, oh, it did, dude. Delivery guy showed up, hit the doorbell. I said, oh, who's here? They said, oh, nobody. The thing that you wanted. Okay, great. Took it in. I fucking ate it. I got a question, man. Yeah, who do you think was on the phone at the end, dude? Oh, that's a good question. Actually, before I went to bed and put my head in my little pillow, that's the last thing I thought about last really? night. I go, really? wait a second, because I'm I'm thinking because I just watched it yeah. for the second time. I'm going, who's on the phone? <sighs> Is it good or bad, right? I think it's bad. Yeah, me too. But they're like happy, not happy about it, but like not they're like happy. Oh, they, again, we're going to try to yeah. get killed again. It's OK. Does this house you know, have a basement. basement. Yeah. Like, I don't know. You know, <sighs> Could it have been Rizza? Tell him, yo, that, yo, the Russians are after that, you, man. Yeah, it's yeah. not a bad impression. It's not a bad one. He saying. says his R's funny. Yeah, I know. I didn't like his casting that much. I, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't love his casting. You know. Look, you could have gotten a better. I actor. thought Method Man would have been better. Oh, dude, Method Man would have been. I thought Ew. maybe Inspector Deck oh. would have been better. Bro, imagine. I thought maybe Raekwon the Chef would have been better. So basically, anybody else from Wu Tang. Yeah, dude, you don't have to say the bit, dude. You know it's what I'm not, saying? I'm not saying the bit. I'm just you pointing just said it out. the bit. Scores? Dude, you want to talk about scores, man? I'm talking about, about, talk about all the scores I need to, All dude. right, man. Well, I gave my opinion first. You got to give your motherfucking score first. Are we doing just a score for the Black Russian and then everything else? Yeah. Or are we... Okay, so we're so Black Russian, I'm giving a 10 out of 10. That was a perfect choice. I, 10 out of 10 for the Black Russian. Okay. I'm going to give this movie a solid... Mm, I'm going to give it a 9. I'm going to say it should have a 90 on Rotten Tomatoes. Perfect, man. Wow. Yep. What are you going to give Black this? Russian. First you? of all, Black Russian. Yeah, I'm going at 9.9. .9. I'm not as like, I'm right there. It's oh, almost. I have a problem. I meant to, to bring this up. With the Black Russian? Well, yeah, or it just... doesn't make sense. Okay. So he goes, my father yeah. was in the 1980 Olympics that right. were obviously in Russia, right? Right. So I go, oh my God, this guy's 40 years old? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He looks like he's 24. Yeah, I don't know. He's our age. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. He's 100%. 20... 100%. That's really weird. I didn't even think of that. Okay. Yep. Yeah, no, but you, he looks young to you, right? Uh, yes. Oh, okay, right? Me? This looks like a kid who's like, he just got out of high school like four or five years ago, has nothing. Like, he, maybe he Yuli, went into this life. Julian's been like taking care of yeah, him, him and his mom bar, and stuff. He fucking, yeah. And he, yeah. 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 He utilizes his skills. I thought he was so much younger. Oh, and I'm an idiot. Uh -oh. I'm a dumbass. Because at first, when they flash, when you first introduce to Yulian the villain, mm. there's an overhead shot and you see Yulian pops up on the screen, right? Yeah. And I thought that was a place. I thought that was like a town Dude, in Russia. Same. So I thought he was in Russia the whole time. <laughs> and it was like at over the beginning. In America, your your brother's uh, at yeah. the beginning. And then yeah, when yeah, he showed yeah. up at the hospital, I was like, oh, they flew to America. Yeah. Right. And then I later, it was a place. And then later on in the movie, Bob Odenkirk goes to the club. I go, this is in the same city. <laughs> Obshack is in this city. Like, yeah. What? And that's the story stuff where I'm like, oh, yeah. It's like, know, why man. is it so Russian here? Yeah. Like, yeah, what's going yeah. on, man? So I don't know if you thought or, or if you uh, thought he was in Russia or if I'm an idiot. I needed to. Ask I thought you, Yulian you know? was a place. 
So one thousand. Yeah, you thought he wasn't in America, right? No, not no, 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 no. no, no, no yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. No. When they first show him, I thought there was a no, Russian no, no, no. club yes. in yes. Russia, right? Nope. With fucking Vladimir Putin in the back jerking off on prostitutes. Yeah, that's what like, I thought. Yeah, it's like because why is the Obshack? Why is all this money here? Hundreds and Shouldn't hundreds of million dollars Russia? is within a mile of Bob Odenkirk. He's just driving, yeah. and burn it. And the fucking local PD, just yeah, <laughs> it's all just hanging out right there. Well, that's what I liked. Like zero cops in this movie. Zero. Only when they broken it, like yeah. nothing else. Nope. No. So cops. it was like, nope. This is a small story. We're not having any other uh, shit involved. And I think that well, it would have been a detriment if they involved other police. There was a police guy trying to figure him out. Yeah. Well, fuck it. Fuck yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. So I had to bring up something that I fucked up, and then I was an idiot about. What am I fucking chopped liver? Is my fucking score not important anymore? Dude, your score Unbelievable. is so important to me mm. that I humbly apologize. It's fine. Okay, dude, dude, dude. Okay, it's not that big a deal. No, it's not that big a deal. Stop, Mikey. That's not put up the. Make sure you put up the thing for the suicide hotline. This is not funny. Put up the suicide hotline thing because, you know, just. <laughs> Unbelievable. Guys, we sincerely apologize. And suicide is a not. A joking matter. My score for this movie, I'm gonna give it a 8.4. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give it that. Um, I'm gonna guess the budget for Mikey to guess for this. Mikey will go like this. An oh. 8.4? <laughs> what's your what's your budgie? Um, I would this. say back to life, back, back to reality. reality. 10 to 15 million. I was gonna say 15. Maybe? Yeah. 15 mil. 10 absolutely. to 15 mil, right? And the I marketing didn't... was probably more or just as much. Oh, without a doubt. Are you serious? This the movie fucking was marketing? fucking shilled yeah. like fucking, you know, yeah. Apple products or some shit. Yeah, we saw the uh, trailer in like January, or I don't remember, January, February maybe. And then it was just like, oh, it came out in April. I don't remember I when don't. the trailer came I out. I don't. It's but all... I'm saying it was everywhere. The oh, no, trailer was all over the place. Everywhere. Like there were posters, it was all over the place. So they were probably like, we made this movie for 15 million. Put another 15 million yeah. into advertising and we'll make, you know, 75 million. Oh no, COVID happens. Yeah. We lose money, you know? And yeah. That, I, we all know that's what COVID's about money. So, uh, that's you know. the whole reason why yeah. it was manufactured. Um, so, uh, but yeah. I just want to point this out before we go that, yes, yeah, I, did, what up? I did see this in the theater. Okay. You went by yourself on a Saturday at two in the morning and uh, it was like you 10... got bang. Bang for in the my back. Buck. I, after 15 minutes, regardless of the movie i go i wish i was home watching this fuck movie theaters i just wanted to put that out there that fuck theaters i love that it had a weird connection to the office i don't know weird i just love that and uh yeah, good point that's the last thing i'll say so um i think that's it you recommend this movie yes i'm gonna fuck you up we're all fucked up <laughs> we got fake guns um, and stuff yeah we got like, fake guns real oh real those aren't real the summer they're, fake, they're all no, fake no, no. we hope you like the movie we hope you like this episode um that's it like Subscribe, comment. That's don't do saying. it. Don't do any of that. Don't ever say that again. Fuck that shit. <laughs> if you like, if you want to like it, like it. If you don't want to like it, don't fucking like it. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. If you don't want to subscribe, don't fucking subscribe. Don't forget the comment. We do not force to do. We force you to do anything. No, 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 no. Free, free cunch. Stop. Um, yeah. So That's thanks it. for what, what was that? Uh, thanks for stopping by the watch. One more time. As always, we're going to be back next time with something that doesn't have to do with guns. Probably.